Okay, guys, so the, the truck started up today and I was actually able to drive it, so uh, I'm gonna shut it off real quick. I wanna look to see if I had that uh, fuel pressure, I mean, sorry, not fuel pressure, uh, the AC pressure sensor still plugged in. I think I left it unplugged, because remember that was shorted. So I might have plugged it back in, I don't remember. It's been a while. But uh, I'm wondering if that caused this thing to uh, pull down the 5 volt reference or something and throw all those coats. Because I was thinking about it. I'm like, man, we had a shorter sensor before and that caused that. Hey guys, I got the Nissan turned on. We're scoped into the 5 volt reference here for our pressure sensor. And uh, we're just going to wait and see when it acts up. I'm just going to try to let it warm up. We're at 5 volts right now. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get this thing knocked up. I do want to clear the codes, see what comes back, because we do have our IAT fuel tank sensor, all this stuff, so. So guys, I was looking up this, uh, these uh, codes with the sensors, and I highlighted all the sensors. The only thing that I can see that these all share is uh, it looks like almost all of them share a ground. Yeah, all the grounds go right here. So that ground, our battery current sensor comes up and then it goes, follows this and goes to our ground. Uh, this sensor, APP1, comes over. Actually, that has its own ground there. Coolant temperature sensor. That comes up to our ground. This one comes up to this ground. So they all share this ground splice right here. Well, it does have A1 and A2, so I guess they might share the same ground there. So that's the only thing that I could see, and then the ECU has this one ground. There it says right front of engine compartment. I guess we could check that, but I really don't think that's our issue. Now, we did have this uh, P0. 643 and it says harness for APP1 shorted uh, power steering pressure sensor shorted refrigerant pressure sensor battery current or the EVAP control system shorted so uh, we already have the uh, refrigerant press refrigerant pressure sensor removed like we could have power steering I don't see any damage on the front on the harness on here so I was looking at these. So like this one looks fine. I'm trying to get it backed up again so we can unplug it. I should have messed with it last night. I'm assuming our ground is right there. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but it doesn't look like something's Obvious. I'm gonna try driving around the park a lot more, see if I can get it backed up. I'll let it run outside. I don't know uh, what else to do with this until we can get it backed up. So we may have a ground problem. I just put the headlights on. Boom. Hey, that runs like crap with the headlights on. Look at our coolant gauge. I put the headlights on. What's our scan tool show? 13.7 right now. 14. So I think we got a voltage drop issue guys with the headlights. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. I'm gonna go grab the lab scope. Maybe we'll check that ground on the front. Cause I was, I was thinking like, what did I turn on last night? And I was at the headlights. So guys, I noticed something. So if I put, turn it off, okay. Car goes back to like pretty much normal. Okay, so we put the parking lights on. It acts up like that, okay? RPMs go up a little higher. It's in a limp mode. Put on headlights. It really doesn't like that. Look how high the RPMs go. Look at that, just from going from parking lights. So, I noticed when we uh, put the headlights on, we have a 200 millivolt drop between here and the engine right there. And I wiggle these. 
and uh, stays there. So 200 millivolt drop right there. So if we go to the other one, the other one's the same way, 200. And we turn the lights off. So we turn the lights off. Look, we dropped to 1.1. Look at that. It goes down to almost normal. So I'm wondering if that drop is our issue. So what I want to do too is I want to measure from our engine to our battery. See if maybe we got a ground that's over right here in these grounding bolts right here. So right there, we got 10 millivolts, which is perfectly fine. Let's turn everything on. So, we have no drop between our engine and this ground. Let's come over because there's another ground here. Another ground in there. Let's see where it is. There it is. We got that one in. There we go. So we got our drop there too. I don't know if that's enough because this is kind of a high load. We got the radiator fans on, all this stuff. So I don't know if 200 millivolts is really going to cause an issue. Um, but hey, we're duplicating it right now. So I got to figure out what's going on. So we're losing our our coolant temp. I want to see what our coolant temp does. Let's, let's go back. Let's go to uh, live data. All ECU inputs. So this thing got a, a lot more interesting. Let's see, do we have battery voltage or anything in here? Let's see, battery current sensor. That's something that gets unhappy. What else gets unhappy in here? Fuel tank temperature sensor. Intake air temperature sensor. Coolant. I don't know if coolant temp sensors. Let's just show these. Let's see what happens when we turn our lights on. Oh, look at our. Look at what our sensors do. So when I turn the lights on. Look at that. I saw our grounds being affected for them. So that's what's going on. That's why it runs like crap. It starts misfiring. So I'm gonna go look up our grounds for them. Okay guys, so I just sanded up the grounds right here. Even though we didn't see any difference uh, when we were doing the voltage drop, but we were also checking the bolts. So don't know if we have a drop in these. We got some kind of voltage drop going on. And, uh, well, actually, we could have scoped the sensor. We could scope the sensor if this doesn't fix it. We'll scope the sensor if this doesn't fix it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, guys, so I cleaned up this side also, right there, that ground. That's our main ground that goes to the body. So we'll see how that fixes it, or if it changes anything. So I'm going to get this battery put back in. And, uh, hopefully it's fixed. Guys, I think it got worse. Oh, there it went. When I first started, it was still on right away. Okay, so we still have a problem. I 
I guess we can check our voltage drops again. I'll check them again on this side. Um, I'm trying to think of what else would cause this. We can measure our ground, our center ground. Let me come over here, we'll measure this. We'll measure our voltage drop on this side again. Okay, so from here to over here, we now have almost no drop, 64 millivolts. So our, move our ground over to our other ground spot under here. So on that one, looks like 60, 60 millivolts. So, we fixed our ground issue there. So now we need to go to our sensor. Uh, let's see what codes we got. I'm gonna quick scan for codes. Well, we know our intake air temperature sensor gets pulled down. So let me look at the intake air temperature diagram. Okay guys, right now we're on the signal wire, the pink wire, coming out of the connector. We got 1.6 volts, okay? Let's see this, so it's showing 113 degrees, okay? So we'll go over to our black. There you go, we're on the black. We see 0 0.9 volts, okay? We'll go over to our green, which is our 12 volt feed, I think. We got 13.95. So now, 13.91, so now we're going to turn our lights on. We'll cause our failure. So you can see our voltage is down. Negative uh, 58. Look at this, 13.82 going to it. Our ground says 0 0.14, 140 millivolts. So, shut this off and we'll see what we change to. Hundred millivolts, one oh nine. I don't know, is that enough? Is is that enough to cause an issue? Like we'll go to our signal. 1.58, like we're showing negative 54. We'll even put the headlights on. See negative, oh sorry, negative 58. Look at that, 1.6 volts. Like a, something adding up here, it's not making sense. And the scan tool is showing the correct voltage. We have to think about this one, this is a little strange. Okay guys, so I wanna show you guys what I found. Uh, I've been on the phone all day, so I didn't get to record most of this. So we'll put our lights on parking lights, okay? Since we can actually do this with the car off. So where do you see this? So we come up here. Look at our 5-volt reference. Okay, this is our 5-volt reference. So we turn the car on. It goes to 5 volts, okay? Then it goes up to 12 volts. We're probed right in right here to our where our AC pressure switch is. See that? 12 volts. So watch this. We'll come in here, we'll turn our lights off. There we go, everything's off. And now look, it's at five volts. So we got five volts right there. And it'll stay at five volts till we put our headlights on, or our parking lights. So we got our parking lights. So then what I did was I came up here, and I was like, oh, I'll pull these light fuses because it doesn't do it with turn signals. So if I pull this fuse right here, which says uh, tail lamps, right there. Look at that. Our five volts drops, or our 12 volts goes back to five volts. So we put this back in, right here. This didn't take long. You can hear it click, you can hear a relay click too when we do this. And uh, that relay that's clicking, let's 
see if I can put this back in. Try to put this back in. Quick. So this relay that's clicking is for our uh, it's right here. It's for our trailer. This one. You can hear it clicking. So let's push that back in a little bit more. There we go. So if we come over to diagram, this is the fuse I pulled. I tried pulling 37. 37 doesn't do anything. But, uh... Oh, wait. No, 30, 36 does something. 37. I mean, sorry. 36 doesn't do anything. That comes up to our front lights. 37, we follow this. This will come over on our purple. This comes to our tail lamps, okay? That's what that fuse is, because I went to the back of the car before, and the tail lamps go out when you pull that fuse. But... If you look up here at the module, this comes over, comes to our trailer tow, and it grounds over here at E9. So that's the only thing we're removing right here, is that one ground point to E9. And if you look at our 5 volt right there, when I click this relay on and off, look at that. So that's doing that to our 5 volt reference. So what I'm going to do is E9, like I said, that's the only thing on that circuit <laughs> right there. When we pull that out, it's just eliminating E9 ground. So that's a really small current to be on there. So what I'm going to do is I looked on here. Uh, is anything ground to E9? I think something grounded to E9 on here. Oh yeah, E9 was our fuel level sensor right here and our fuel pump. So that's there. Uh, I don't remember if I saw any other E9s. Is there anything that says left front? Not seeing anything. I'm gonna have to keep going through here, see if there's anything else that says left front. But that, it's just strange that that one relay stops our problem. I, I think that's all I see is just that ground right there for our fuel pump and our tank. I remember what was in E9. So E9 was our trailer relay. So this relay supplies power to the trailer harness which grounds at E9 and then it also grounds up here at E9 for this trailer relay right here so that's the variable see our trailer connector that's in the back of the car comes up and it does have a 7 pin so that grounds there and then uh, the 4 pin grounds here so Yeah, we should probably, we could pull, what we could do is we could pull this fuse 32, 10 amp, and see if our power goes away, like if uh, our voltage drops down, which I think it will. I pulled the airbox out too. Here's our grounds. I was trying to wiggle them to see if I got any change over here with anything, and I didn't see any change. It just keeps like glitching where it's at right there guys so look at this so we come down here trailer tow right here pull this 10 amp fuse boom our problem goes away so it's making it interesting and so that means whatever's causing our draw are causing our issue it's probably related to this E9 ground because our voltage is going up so none of this is tied into the PCM so if this is all if this is all done by the uh, 
buy another module, then it has to be a bad ground. So I'm going to take these off. We'll clean these grounds because we might have a good connection. Oops. Okay, I'd love to test them, but I just wonder if we have a bad connection to the chassis. Look how green that one is. How green that connector is right there. Let me see if I can make like a jumper and see if it'll fix this at all. Like I'm gonna try to like clamp it on here and then clamp it to the block. Okay guys, so I uh I cleaned up the grounds here, but I just thought about something when I was bringing this in. I wonder because you know how this whole back was fixed back here? I wonder if somebody mixed up the fuel tank pressure sensor five volts and the uh I wonder if they mix up the wiring for that and like say like a tail light or the trailer harness and that's what's causing our 5 volts or 12 volts to go up uh, it's crazy I, I'm, I'm willing to put money on on that that somebody uh, wired this the back's wrong or something or maybe some wires are damaged because somebody was doing something back there so I'm gonna lift this up we'll pull this wheel off and we'll check this tire I mean not tire but we'll check the harness back there we might have been on the wrong end of the car okay guys so we made some progress so I don't know what I took where I left off but this fuse 32 this goes right to our trailer relay right here so fuse 32 is the main power feed that goes back to the trailer uh, to seven way. That's all it does. It goes from there through the relay and I'm down. So if I take that out, our 12 volt goes away. So now what I did was I went to the back of the car. I had unplugged all the connectors in the back to see if anything was shorted back here. I didn't see anything. So I slid them back together. They're not completely latched, but I undid that one and this other one. Those are both for our trailer. There was no change. And I pulled some of the tape off. So now what I did was I came up here to our ECU. I undid our ECU connector right here and I went through and I checked them all to find out which one had 12 volts that we could switch. And uh, so I got the scope set up, now watch this. So if I cycle the, the lights, let's see, like this, right here, if I cycle it like this, watch our scope. If I leave it on, look at that. Leave it on. Off. So look at that. So now we know our issue is on this pin right here. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to uh, take our cover off. Then we're going to see what that pin is for. And uh, we might, we might uh, cut the wire and then do some more testing since it's right here. Okay, guys. So I found our wire. Uh, it looks like it's like a green one. You guys are too far and they get blurry. But uh, looks like. There's a blue one. It says a blue, like a light blue, right next to the pink right there. So if you look on here, it's dying. You see we got our 12 volts and I cycled the key already, so that's our one. So I'm gonna bring up a pin out and we'll see what that pin goes to. Well guys, I was trying to find the harness and look at this, we ran over to the other side. Look at that mess in there. Right there I think is where all the problems started. Crazy. So guys, look at this harness. Found it here. Melted over here. Looks like it comes up to here. I'm gonna see if I can unclip it and then pull it back through. 
I wonder if it melted anywhere up top. Where's that going in the car? No, it runs across this support up here. Man, this is bad. This is bad. Well guys, I'm gonna pull out as much as this uh, green and purple wires. It looks like, still looks like most of it is just where the green and the purple melted together. But they just st stick on these other wires. So I'm gonna pull most of this out. I'm gonna cut the green and the purple and just pull them out. Because uh, we don't need that. We ran those new wires down the other side. I didn't realize it came down this side. I thought it ran down the other side. Actually, no, I thought it went inside the car. So yeah, I'm gonna try to pull these out. It just sucks because that's a lot of melting that that green and purple did. Just stuck that way there. So I found our short. Right here was our short and our blue wire. Right here is where it all melted. But like I said, like all this other stuff, a lot of this other stuff is just the other casing from the wire being stuck on this stuff. Like you can peel it off. And then the wires look fine. I don't know if there's a small spot that's gonna be like damaged or not. Like I'll tell them about this. Ideally you get a new harness. I called around, I didn't see any. But uh, yeah. I just wanna see if we can get this thing to work. Like this is all casings from the other one. So I'm gonna pull this all apart right here where this tape's at. And we'll see if we can fix the wires that are right here. So this is where it got really hot and melted through the outside. Yeah, look at that. So all the damaged sections I can see, I put liquid electrical tape on and some heat shrink. So I'm going to uh, rub them with tape quick. And the back here I did liquid electrical tape on some of the damaged sections and where I thought the casing might have been a little thin. So I'm going to quick wrap it up with some tape and then we'll put it back on and we'll see if it works. But like a lot of this just looks like a mess because you can see there's just melted casing on there. It's out to see if they can get another harness for this. Well they need another harness either way, like it has to have a harness. I just want to see if this fixes everything. And let's make sure the PCM doesn't get pulled down. Wasted a lot of time on this. Okay guys, so I got the harness routed back up here. We'll uh, lower it down. I just want to see if everything works. Uh, here's the wire I cut out that was melted. That's our uh, green and purple for our wheel speed. I really, really think, I could be wrong, but I really, really think that somebody was uh, power probing something that they weren't supposed to or jump something. Because I've never seen a harness melt that bad. Now, I did notice one thing. This loom is completely packed on this car. The loom really shouldn't be 100% full. That's how you have wires break. That's how stuff gets damaged, like stuff overheats. You're supposed to have some room in the loom. So I'm gonna get the PCM connected back up and then we'll double check everything. Well guys, I think we still got a short there because I just turned the lights on real quick to see. So we have a short somewhere else in our circuit. Um, yeah, they're just gonna have to now the harness. There's no question about it. Uh, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna connect the PCM back up, and we'll see if we get our five volts. Okay, guys. So I noticed that with this uh, pathfinder now, like I can't get it to start now. We have no five volt reference coming out of the PCM, but we also got this CAN communication circuit that's on all these modules. And it looks like we're missing some modules. So I'm wondering if our CAN network's down or if this module got damaged. Uh, I'm gonna shut this key off. We'll, uh, we'll unplug our... I wanna unplug the fans in the front. Guess that window doesn't work. Oh, there it goes. 
So, yeah, I want to unplug our fans so we don't kill the fans. And then I also want to uh, unplug the module and see if maybe something's pulling down it. Maybe we got a short somewhere else. Well, guys, here's the ECU from the uh, from the Pathfinder. See right here is all burned up. That's why our ECU is dead right now. So I probably didn't like that 12 volts going to it. But hey, I don't know what else to do. It takes time to find problems like that. And uh, even if we probably wouldn't have tried it again, it would have probably still been already damaged because it was going into limp mode before. And uh, yeah, look at that. That's our problem right there. So I'm gonna see if I can get another one and we'll go from there.